In this video, I am going to quickly demonstrate how to download and install the Git client for Windows, how to configure SSH keys for it, and then how to um, check out a Git repository using Visual Studio Code. So we'll start the download here from the Git download page and open the file. Run the installer. If you like, you can have it put a, an icon on the desktop, but you probably don't really need it. I'll show you a different trick for that. We'll use the default editor for now as Git's editor. I highly recommend that um, go ahead. The new trend here, the, by the time you install this, it, it might be different for the default branch. The new commonly accepted default branch name is main. So if your installer suggests main, then leave it at that. Uh, otherwise, I would go ahead and do the override and start calling it main now. Uh, the recommended sitting here is fine. That way Git is available from all applications. And I recommend using the bundled OpenSSH. That is the easiest way to get secure shell connections for Git activity. Again, use the OpenSSL library, pretty much just doing defaults. This default is a good one. Uh, there are some advanced settings I might be able to cover in another tutorial. But uh, check out Windows style, but commit Unix-like style. That is a good practice to have because then your code will be pretty much compatible across platforms because Git can take care of which way to do line style endings if you're switching back and forth writing code that's going to be run, say, on a Linux web server. Uh, the default terminal is probably your best option here. Um, <clears throat> personally, on this one, um, this is the simplest one, is that if you are working with multiple people in a different project, or multiple people in the same project, and different people commit, it will merge your changes together. Um, rebasing will try to make a cleaner way of doing things. Um, only fast forward will only let you pull changes if you don't have any conflicting changes locally. Uh, this is the way that I work, but the default is probably the simplest and easiest for people just starting out with Git. So you'll probably want to stick with this setting here. I would stick with whatever the default is for credentials at the time that you install. As you can see, this is a newer cross-platform thing here, but this is going to work basically the same and let Windows work. Also, I would not generally choose anything that ever says deprecated when I'm doing an install, because that means it's old, out of date, and not being used anymore. File system caching is great. Um, you probably don't need either of these experimental things, so just go ahead and leave those alone. <clears throat> and we'll let the files install. I don't want to release, I don't want to view the release notes. I do want to go ahead and launch Git Bash so that I can get started right away. So I am here in my home directory now, um, which on a fresh install with fresh windows, there shouldn't really be, this, this directory is, is my user's directory on my local C drive. So you're going to definitely see some files in here. Um, <clears throat> that's the same files that if you went to this PC and went down to your home directory, C users, and your username, you're going to find those files here. Uh, that's the same list of files. You can kind of see how this matches up, although these are showing some hidden files or files that are hidden to Windows. Um, good tip while we're here, uh, when working in development on a Windows PC, 
do yourself a huge favor, click this view bar, turn on file name extensions for sure. Um, otherwise, you're going to have a hard time when you're looking at this, figuring out what files are in your working directories for your projects. Um, you want to have that turned on so that you can see the actual file names, complete file names of everything you're working on. Uh, whether you're using Git or not, that's just a good practice, especially for developers to be in. I often also like to turn on hidden items, but that's a matter of personal choice um, in your Windows directories. As we'll see shortly here, that's going to be kind of useful to be able to get to that from Windows. So the next thing we want to do um, to really use Git effectively, you should use Git over SSH, which is secure shell. It's a way that Unix systems, Unix-based systems, Linux-based systems work together, communicate together. It's kind of the default uh, way that terminal sessions happen. And it's the most secure and easiest way to set up Git to work. So in order to do this, um, and for more information on this, you can go to the HFC portal, students, classes, CIS tutorials, and you'll find some Git tutorials here. So in order to set up SSH actions here, you'll want to use the SSH keygen command to generate a set of private and public keys that you can use to communicate with servers. The private key contains your password. The private key has a password on it, as, as we we're about to see here. And the private key is, in effect, your password. You want to keep this file safe. You don't want to store this in your H drive. You don't want to store on the on the HFC network. You don't want to store this on a shared computer. You can put this file on a thumb drive. Um, but if you're working and setting up your home PC for a remote CIS class especially, uh, definitely go ahead and put this on your on your own personal computer as long as you have full control of the computer. And then I'll show you at the end where to grab these files and back them up to a thumb drive because if you lose them, you've basically lost your password. If you forget the password you set here, you've lost your password and have to start over. If you lose the key files you generate here, you've lost your password and have to start over. It's not the end of the world because you can start over and set everything back up again, but it'll save you a lot of time if you make sure to remember this password and make sure to make a backup copy of your private and public keys. This comment here is a good place to put um, your name or your username, and I like to put the date so that I remember when this key was generated. And so that is 210901. Uh, go. Normally, this is going to prompt you for your you local. You notice this here. I'm doing this on a computer on the HFC network, so it's prompting me for the H drive. Uh, don't worry about that. Let's. I'm going to store that in. I'm just going to store that. Make sure it stores on my local. So C. <clears throat> Uh, this is also, you could specify the drive letter of your thumb drive here if you wanted. Um, and now it wants my passphrase. Ah, it did not like that because I don't have this directory. Um, that's fine. Let's just go ahead and make it. And we'll run that command again. And this time I'm going to actually specify the file name right on the command line so it doesn't ask me. Normally you should not have to do that. All right, and now if you look in the .ssh directory, I have two files, a private key and a public key. 
These are the files that I'm going to need. My private key is my passphrase. The public key is the file that I will need to set up any remote connections that I want to do here. And if we go back out to File Manager, we now see because I've shown hidden directories, I can get to that directory here. And again, you can see the value of having the file extensions. My computer thinks this is a Microsoft Publisher file. It's not. It is a text file. We're going to take a look at the contents of that in one second. But we have a couple of other things we want to set up first. The easiest way to use uh, this set of keys with Git and not have it prompt you for your password all the time is to set up Git Bash to load these every time you start Git Bash. And then it'll be there and it'll just be running in the background and ready to go. So again, I'm here in my I'm here in my local directory, my local home directory, and I'm going to take a quick look at all of the files in my directory, and I do not see the file I'm looking for, which is good. So I'm going to create a file. You can do this with an editor, but this is pretty simple to just do from the command line for this for this quick process here. Uh, you could do this with Visual Studio Code if you already have it installed, but I don't have it installed yet. Um, cat to dot bash rc. So cat is going to create a file into a file name called dot bash rc, and I want to put in these two commands. This first one will start the SSH agent in the background. And then this will add my key to it. So put those two lines in, type control D to end that file. Now before I close, I'm going to close and restart the git bash. But before I do, I'm going to right click down here. I'm going to pin git bash to the taskbar because I'm going to be using it a lot. And I want it to be available and I don't really want it to be a desktop icon. So I'll exit git bash, and when I start git bash again, it's now asking me for the passphrase that I put in. And it shows that it, you see the agent is running, and it shows that my identity from this file was, was added. So let's, let's check this out. Let's, let's try to use this now. We'll do this from the command line for now, and I have other tutorials that show how this all works together with Visual Studio Code. So we created those files again. Alice. We created these two files, and now we want to see the contents of this pub file. So cat dot pub, and this is our public key. We want to copy this line and then jump over to HFC's GitLab server. And up in the top right corner, after you've logged in, created an account, go to Preferences. And on the left, it says SSH keys. And we want to add a key. And so we'll paste our public key in here. You notice it copied the title down here to this. We can set an expiration date. I would not necessarily want to do that. Remember it says do not paste your private key. It's going to be this public key is the contents you want to paste in here. And we'll say add key. And now that is showing up as one of the keys. I've actually have multiple keys in here. Um, you do not have to make a separate key for every computer. Uh, you could if you wanted to. I would prefer not to. Um, and so, yeah, here's that new key that I just created just now. Um, and that's here. So let's try this out and see if it works. We'll go back to our projects. And for this particular example, I'm going to go to the CIS uh, 294 for, for the current semester this developer stories project. I've got a link right here that says clone. And so what I want to do is I want to clone with SSH. 
Now, if you run into problems with keys, you can still clone with HTTPS. That works, it's valid. Keys are definitely the better way to do things, um, the more secure way to do things and easier way to do things. I'm gonna copy this URL. I'm going to go back to Git Bash. Now I'm in my home directory, so you can work right here, but now you're gonna end up with a big old mess in your, in your home directory. Some people like to work in downloads. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to make a file. I'm just going to make a directory here, and you can do this with the command line, or you can do it in Windows. Um, I'm going to make a new folder called um, Projects. And so now here, I'm going to CD to Projects. And then I'm going to git clone and paste that URL. And notice it says cloning into CIS 294 developer stories. And you notice it did not prompt me for a password or anything because it's using the key that that I created and is running in this SSH agent that started when I opened the window here. So I can either CD into this CIS294 developer stories, and here are some files, or I actually now I have that folder here, and I can open this up in an editor. Um, I'll just open it in Windows Notepad for right now, uh, but Again, you'll probably want to get Visual Studio Code working here. Um, open with, uh, Windows Notepad, let's say not, say always. Um, and there we go. We've got that file. I can change it. I can do other things with Git. And so that is, I have plenty of other tutorials already available for how to use git this is just a kind of a fresh look at an installation of how to install git uh, for all of my tutorials you can check out cislinux.hfcc.edu slash tilde mica and i have some key th things up at the top and then all of my recent tutorials i have a few things pinned um, including things about GitLab and SSH, uh, backing up projects to it, that, and you can view the full list of all my tutorials here. Thank you for watching this video.